traveling to the West Bank, I wanted to see what the latest news articles were about on women in the area. While there were a handful of pieces highlighting the resilience, entrepreneurial spirit, and intelligence of Arab and Palestinian women, the majority of media still portrayed the women as subordinate and hopelessly oppressed. But that is not the case. So in Challenge to Change, we have She Codes program. She Codes program, we do it with a partnership with uh, universities around the world that uh, are specialized in coding, programming, and high tech. And one of these universities is Harvard University. We are based in Lebanon and here in Palestine, in Gaza, Jerusalem, and the West Bank. So uh, in Palestine, the current situation for these girls that uh, more than 85% of the people who are studying coding, programming, and high tech are girls. And uh, half of these girls are from the villages. And the atmosphere of the work here and the job skills doesn't really match the traditions in Palestine and doesn't uh, match the current situation. Where these uh, women or ladies live in the villages, they, they, get, they can't go to the cities to work. So uh, in Challenge to Change, we provide these girls with training, online training, where they can take it from their houses. And after that, they will start communicating with the universities and the private sector and this sector. And they will start having more duties and jobs. And here we are talking about paid jobs. So basically, when uh, she's home, she will get experience and she will get uh, income. One of the biggest needs in the Palestinian society here is to get ready to the workforce and to the work atmosphere here. So we provide a program called uh, Work Readiness, and it's one of our most uh, successful programs here in Palestine, uh, and especially in Gaza. We provide ladies with intensive training sessions about work readiness, about how to write her CV, how to express herself, what to do in job interviews, and uh, so she can be ready uh, to work and uh, empower her soft skills in this sector. Hi. 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 Having a place to come to exchange knowledge and cultural information is important in any community. But here in Nazaria, the Sharuk Women's Center is giving women a chance to feel economically, politically, and socially empowered. The Sharuk Society for Women is a non profit organization established in 2002. And we have in our board teachers, nurses, social workers, engineers, doctors, uh, all these kind of women from this area. This area uh, in east south of Jerusalem is including Zaria, Sheikh Saad, Abu Dis, Sawahra, Bedouin community. There is there is here more than 85,000 persons live in this area. Um, <laughs> Yeah. This organization is empowerment organization because we believe both that the economic empowerment for women is one of our social responsibility as Shrook Center forward our local community, it train them in vocational training like uh, organic production, like uh, kitchen production. Uh, all the time the Palestinian women look to have their natural life. Uh, their hope for their children, for kids, for the future, because hope comes through peace. Basically, the family law, the Palestinian family law, uh, it's uh, uh, almost about the relation in, inside the family. So it deals with uh, marriage, divorce, uh, alimony, inheritance, all of these issues. And all of these is issues are basically based on uh, Sharia, the Islamic Sharia. So the Muslim, the Palestinian Muslim, had their own laws. Uh, in the same time, the Christian Palestinian woman had uh, another laws uh, depend on the church that uh, they are in. Uh, we don't have a family law for all the Palestinian. We had uh, religion, uh, family laws, uh, mainly uh, the old way of dealing with the Sharia, not the newest perspective and the understanding of Sharia. So we still have some problems inside these laws. We try to uh, implement Sidao in Palestine um, and dealing with uh, the new perspective of uh, understanding the Sharia 
for uh, the, the cause of uh, women's rights. I think growing up, having to make it on my own, I had to go to a boarding school as a child, not feeling understood, being uh, blind and being who I am as a person and knowing myself. I, I think I felt like uh, my, my way to make a difference in the world is to try to bridge perspectives and, and uh, help people who are invisible to be more visible for who they really are. I'm a therapist by training. I'm a free spirit and uh, humor uh, has, been, uh, has been my biggest coping uh, mechanism in life. I think if I think of Palestine or Jerusalem, uh, some of the real barriers are ex lack of exposure because of all the restrictions of movement and, and all the restrictions of, of growth in life. One of them is, one big one is the occupation and what, how it restricts people, how it disconnected communities through the checkpoints if you pass them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to blame it all on this because I think even under this adversity, we have to really work in um, in, in, in growing, in, in, in finding opportunities for exposure, in, in creating awareness. I mean, to me, um, I could have been just, uh, just a victim sitting in some kind of shelter for the blind. But, um, and if, you know, many women have this slogan of, I live for others, I sacrifice, and, you know, I have to do it because if I don't, no one else will. And yeah, if, if we take a step back and, and uh, allow sharing and allow ourselves a break, I believe, and, and if we raise our, our boys to be different kind of men, I think uh, we can have an easier life. We can carry the burden uh, together. So when in your life do you feel empowered? I feel empowered when I make impact. I feel empowered when I, I play, when I travel. I feel very empowered with friends around. Uh, when I swim, swimming, is Really? Yeah, swimming is one of my real sources of empowerment. I'm not someone who wants to blame everything on occupation, but as you know, like collective trauma and collective uh, conflict takes people back. People regress. To protect themselves, people regress, regress to old traditions, to more conservative, to survival rather than growth and development. When I was in the school and 15 years uh, old, the first time the soldiers put me in the prison. Yes, uh, this is the first time I went to the administration against the occupation and what happening. And then put me in the prison with uh, 31 uh, young girls. I appreciate the women because the women, they are not afraid from the society itself because they face the problems. And when, when uh, the women, for example, there's honor killing happening, the women, they go there and they uh, administrain against what happened. And this is non-humanity. And they stand against the judge, against the court, against the president, against the prime minister. In spite of all of us, you find sometimes in our role and our capacity, it's better than other countries. And we did our best, because, but, but we are working hard yeah. for ourselves and how to all the time to be have energy, to be powerful, to change, and how to build a safe environment for women in her health, in her education, in her life, in her security, in her uh, work, in her school, in, uh, in her civil rights, in her uh, position on the government, political role, everything. Because this building, we need it at home. We need it with ourselves. We have to start with ourselves to respect ourselves and respect each other. So I think this building is very important. The people, when you when you hear you the first time peace building, they start to think, oh, this is normalization. This is with the Israeli side. This is uh, with the Americans. And all the people start to uh, to, to to talk about um, a negative way. Jerusalem is a place for uh, peaceful, for uh, the people to, 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 to unite to each other, to to love each other, uh, but at the end, all of us, we are the same and we are human beings. We have to live with each other and to respect each other.